We've got more plumbing for you in this episode, and I'm going to try to basically turn it over to Phil. Let me mention quickly that we had an interview with him on our podcast, and if you'd like to give that a listen, the video can be found on our second channel, EC2. This is our, the kitchen sink. Here's the middle of the kitchen sink, and we've got a pull-out valve. A lot of times, you know, a faucet that you can pull the sprayer out and wash the kids. And the hose drips down like this, and when you pull the, fa the hose out, it hangs up on everything. Really irritable. And it usually happens when you retrofit one that's not planned. Like uh, an older house, you throw a nice new faucet in and all the angle stops are right in the middle and the, the darn hose hangs up on them. So we're putting the hot and cold off center. And you see a lot of times you have a, a, a faucet left and right. I like to put them hot on top, cold on the bottom. And uh, it kind of centralizes them because you want to save the space under the cabinet for the ladies to put their garbage can and all their stuff. So a lot of times we'll use a, uh, a copper strap that goes across here. You solder these two. We'll look at a few of those we might use. And the way I like to do these is I'll screw these copper straps to the stud and it anchors it really tight and solid. Um, sometimes guys will run PEX pipe right out the wall like this and they make an, a shutoff valve that hooks right to the PEX pipe. But it's all wiggly feeling. It feels like a trailer house. We're not building a trailer house. Yeah, pretty sturdy that way. Yeah. The back of the hole has an isolator on it. Now these guys fill the hole up. Hope the water shut off. Keep in mind that anytime you throw something up, uh, shut it off. You won't get the surprise later. We're gonna sweat copper pipe to this valve. It comes a little bit universalized where you could put fittings on it, or you can solder or sweat copper pipe right into the valve. But you gotta remove some of this plastic and stuff, and there's shutoffs on there. And little screwdriver shutoffs, so you can work on the thing without shutting the whole world off. And go to the store and get parts and still have water in the house, which is a really nice feature on any shower valve. So we'll pretend like we read that. You generally don't glean any information out of instructions. <laughs> so if something doesn't work, and then you can go over it and find out what was wrong. An interesting point, <clears throat> depending on the, the, the shower you're putting one of these valves in, and, and most valves are a little, are very similar, depending on, you know, all the brands have a, this little piece of plastic tells you what flush is on your finished wall. So if you're gonna have an inch of tile hanging out, you uh, may flop this around. You could spin this around to make it go closer or farther away. Point of all this is read the instructions, it'll tell you all about it. Rokas bankruptcy. Okay. One of the most important things is to ream copper pipe. That's where all the noise comes from when the water's running. Keep the shavings out of your stuff. Good 
the little edge that I'm reaming out will cause turbulence and the water will spin around going past an elbow not always on a brass one but a copper elbow will eat the back of the elbow out and make a lot of noise it takes a lot of time to do all those little prep things and when your boss is yelling at you to hurry up when you're plumbing a new house sometimes these things get overlooked don't overlook them a little bit of flux when the flux gets hot cleans the impurities off the metal the oxidation that way the solder will flow flux is also an excellent way to find any cut you have on yourself flux off both sides don't often have to clean the inside of a fitting unless they're really old and been in stock for 20 years because the fittings come with a little bit of wax on them from the factory that keeps the oxygen off of them so they don't oxidize so you don't have to sand them generally you know you have to sand them when you start to solder something and the solder won't flow I won't be able to hear over this. Now if you don't wipe the flux off, it'll turn green and look really horrifying later on. And uh, your customer will think there's a leak just because it's turning all green. Just throw me that little rag. You don't want to quench a joint with water because the two materials shrink at different rates when you quench them. And you lose your bond between the solder and the copper. Take a wet rag. Touch it up here, it's not sizzling, you know. It's pretty cool, you're not, qu you're not quenching anything. But a wet w rag will wipe off that flux while it's still warm. So it won't look like horrifying crap later. If you can hear me, but I'm not yeah. going to teach you how to solder. I'm just going to throw some points in so it's not so boring to watch it. I'm preheating everybody. We're just warming it up. The heat is going to pull the solder. So rather than heating this up a bunch, I'll heat this side bunch because the solder is going to pull into that. And I'll go and touch it. And that's my temperature probe. I don't want to get it too hot, it burns all the flux out. Here, I'll pull the heat away. I quit melting, see that's my temperature I want to play with. I don't want to get it too hot. There it goes, flowing all the way around. I move the torch around so I get the heat to pull the solder. I wipe it with some flux. See how I moved it, bumped it? Move it back and put a little solder back in it. Okay, now we don't want to bump it, make sure everything's square, you're happy.
Okay, that should hardly leak at all. Okay, now you have this whole bundle of fun that's easy to strap up. It's all straight. We're gonna screw that to the tub somewhere in this area. I made Scott build all this blocking and junk because we had such a, a strange vent coming out. He's such a good guy. Always put the drain three, four inches off center of the center of the sink. A lot of times your, your P-trap will come in if this was on center and it's too close and the nuts get into the radius of the P-trap. So this way the P-trap kind of goes sideways and over into it. But the P-trap only has a four inch offset to it. That's why that's not in the center of the world. We're going to strap this one to the side of the stud. those things. We would have normally just overhung the strap over here and soldered them both into the strap, but it's just as easy to do that rather than add another block in here and messing around. And there you have it. Stay. So you have undoubtedly figured out by now that Phil and I have known each other for a long time. I trust him completely with anything at all, and that's a real comfort when it comes to your plumber. Think about it. Those guys walk into your house, whether it's a new house or the house you're living in, with big, gnarly drills and saws and torches, and then they do all of the work and build all of the systems that define civilization for most of us. And the reality is that most of us have to take their word for whether or not it's done correctly. So keep looking till you find someone just like Phil. And good luck with that. But just the nicest guy though, you know, who would never pick a fight, Let's put it that way. You'll sure finish one. <laughs> I know, I, I really hope I never <laughs> cross paths with him or wrong him in the wrong way. Oh, yeah. These aren't quite as stout as the way we've done all the other ones, but definitely fine. One more thing. We are busy catching up on our promise to post the costs that we're incurring on this project on the Perks site for our supporters. And we're going to improve that over time, make it more accurate and make it reflect pretty accurately what's been going on here. So if you're interested in knowing any of the costs associated with the work that's going on here, check out the notes in the video, see how you can become a supporter. There's a lot of other information there that I think will make it well worth your time to investigate this. Thank you for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.